This week's 1044 is brought to you by Chevron Dello 680F Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Temperatures are dropping faster than spot market rates. Are your trucks ready for the changing of the seasons? Hey everybody, happy Black Friday and welcome back to the 1044, a weekly webisode from the editors here at CCJ. I'm Jason Cannon and my co-host on the other side is Matt Cole. It's a misnomer that there's a seasonal component to maintenance. A good fundamental PM program is a year-round thing. But as the seasons change, the demand on a truck system and its components also changes, making at least a seasonal checkup a good idea. In Alabama, where Jason and I live, low temps hit the upper 20s late last week. Just a few weeks before, highs were in the 80s. That kind of sudden temperature swing can really bring into focus the performance of your coolant. But there's a lot more that goes into a coolant check than just making sure that there's some in the reservoir. And Chevron Lubricant's commercial fleet business consultant, Shelly Eckert, joins us this week to share some tips on how fleets can make sure that their trucks are up for winter's challenge. The way that we approach coolant maintenance, um, or I approach coolant maintenance, is really to encourage year-round coolant maintenance including it into your normal PM process. We work with our fleets to make sure that there's a section on their PM worksheets that includes bullet points to inspect the cooling system, such as making sure you're you're checking your freeze point to make sure it is adequate and that you're not out of balance with the amount of water to glycol to start with, because that is the number one critical physical property of the coolant. And the way to properly check that is to utilize a refractometer. There are more than a handful of ways to test a coolant, but Shelley is adamant that fleets lean most heavily on two, a properly calibrated refractometer and test strips. I've seen things out there that are, I got, you know, the floating balls and those don't work. So I make my guys throw them out because the second they suck up any oil when they're testing that, it causes the uh, floating balls to be off. So therefore the freeze points will be off. I will go into a shop and I'll ask them where all the refractometers are and bring them to me. And I'll ask them, has this been calibrated? And some will say yes. And some will say no. And I'll ask them, how do you, how do you check to make sure this is reading correctly? And I get some very crazy answers and I'll tell them it's room temperature water because everything, all water freezes at 32 degrees. So it's easy, right? And you can use the water from, you know, the sink or, Even water from the streams, (laughs) it's just a little water and make sure that it's just a room temperature water. Put it on the refractometer and you make sure that it's calibrated correctly. Now, about those test strips. One of the things you first want to do is when you look at a coolant, you want to make sure it's clear, it's bright, and it's free of any particles. Okay? And then the next step would be the the refractometer. Courage always to test with a pH test strip because you can determine a lot of things with the pH test strip such as if your coolant is typically an extended life coolant is going to be about an eight or nine for pH. There are t- uh, pH test strips widely available, but you want to have something that's resistant to, to the dye of the coolant because the dye of the coolant can also interfere with the t- test strips. Using the pH test strip, which is the same scale, whether you're, you're testing your pool water, right? It goes from zero to 14. And as I've shared before, the pH on, a, on an extended life coolant should be an eight or a nine. When it drops down and that coolant becomes acidic, you have to look for the source of where it, why it's become acidic. If it increases, it typically indicates that you have, if you're running a nitrate-free coolant, it'll indicate that you're use, you have nitrates in your cooling system. So it's kind of a nice little trick to monitor your cooling system easily in the field. Uh, we've also... And this is where it gets a little complicated. We have these carboxylate test strips, organic acid test strips, right? That's going to be very formula specific. So you have to be careful with that one. So you know you know with what coolants you have in the cooling system. And honestly, when, when it comes to over-the-road fleets, the only time that we have an opportunity to make sure that the truck has the proper amount of coolant and the proper physical properties of the coolant is when that truck is in the bay. Because as soon as it leaves and the driver has it, if they have to top up with coolant over the road, you could be commingling two different coolants. And that's allowed up to 25%. But once you get to 25%, you get those dyes mixing. You can't really tell, which is why you have to really test your coolant to make sure everything's good to go. 
Where coolant maintenance can go totally off the rails, Shelley said, is when the people in charge of buying coolant decide to make a change and don't tell the people in charge of maintaining it. A switch from a conventional coolant to an extended life coolant where certain additives and filters may no longer be necessary, for example. There's also an often overlooked element of coolant testing that can be a critical component to the entire system. And Shelley tells us about that after a word from 1044 sponsor, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its after treatment system has traditionally been a double-edged sword. The same engine oil that is so essential to protecting your engine's internal parts is also responsible for 90% of the ash that is clogging up your DPF and upping your fuel and maintenance costs. Outdated industry thinking still sees a trade-off between engine and emission system protection, and Chevron was tired of it. So they spent a decade of R&D developing a no-compromise formulation. Chevron Lubricants developed a new ultra-low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with Omnimax technology cuts sulfate ash by a whopping 60%, which reduces the rate of DPF clogging and extends DPF service life by two and a half times. And just think what you can do with all the MPGs you're going to add from cutting your number of regens. But Dello 600 ADF isn't just about after treatment. It provides complete protection, extending drain intervals by preventing oil breakdown. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, and now you don't. 600 ADF from Dello with Omnimax technology, it's time to kick some ash. Make sure that you are also pressure checking the radiator cap because th those can be inexpensive and they can break. And if you're not, the system's not properly pressurized, you can create the water to boil off and then you, you create more glycol and sometimes that's not so good. You'll lose your heat transfer properties because it can boomerang and then it can go up into the EGR, cause the, crack, cause the EGR to crack and cause the gas from the EGR, get into the coolant, make the coolant acidic. Coolant is pretty universally referred to by color. You either use the green or the pink, but the color isn't part of the protection. And Shelly said you need to understand what's in the system so when you're topping off, you're using the same product. There is a rainbow of colors out there. TMC put an RP out after the colors were kind of out of a rainbow as a guidance of what was to, to be determined for color, meaning like um, an extended life coolant should be, nitrate extended life coolant should be red. At one time they had the nitrate free coolant, coolant being identified as, as yellow. And that changed when for on highway, it changed when Detroit diesel wanted a um, red or an orange color coolant to identify as a nitrite free coolant. So you have all kinds of colors out there. One of the things you have to understand is the fine print of the coolant. I had a situation, there's a coolant on the market that says it's a million mile coolant. But when you look at the fine print, it says you have to re every 150,000 miles. That's not a, an extended life coolant. It's a long life coolant. Then you have some coolants out there that are, you know, there's a fluorescent green coolant that is a Japanese hybrid coolant and it's green. So you have to understand what is in your cooling system and should maintain, maintain that with the same coolant type. If you are a fleet that is on a red coolant, and a lot of times when you know these trucks, they're going to be labeled with what coolant is in that sump. And if it's not labeled, once you put what you know you're using, label it of what is in that cooling system. Because the shop knows what they're using, but the driver may or may not. I've seen for extended life coolants out there, the blue and red and pink and yellow. And you have to just be careful because there's, there's certain, certain circumstances where marketing addresses it as being a, a universal coolant. Well, that may be for automotive, but not for heavy duty. So you have to know your, what your coolant is, because honestly, 40% of the engine related failures are coolant related. So coolant is a very important piece, which is why we put the cool tools, tools together to give the technicians an added kit into their toolbox. That's it for this week's 1044. You can read more on ccjdigital.com. And as always, you can find the 1044 each week on CCJ's YouTube channel. If you've got questions, comments, criticisms, or feedback, please hit us up at 1044trucking at gmail.com or give us a call at 404-491-1380. Until next week, everybody stay safe.